Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be looking at a chess game between Grandma Grandmaster Vishwanathan Anand and Indian cricket player Yuzwender Chahal. Now, I'm a huge fan of both cricket and chess. I've been playing chess most of my life, and I've also been following cricket for most of my life. Uh, and so, this game is pretty special to me because it's one of my favorite chess players of all time playing against uh, one of my favorite cricketers of all time. So I've looked up to Anand since I was little, and I've also been had the had the privilege of you know watching Charles' career grow. He spent the last seven years at my favorite cricket franchisee, the Royal Challengers, and he is I've seen him sort of transition into the Indian cricket team in the last four years. It's been quite nice to see. So this is a pretty special game. So this was played at a charity event recently hosted, uh, recently hosted by Chess.com and uh, Samai Raina, I believe, to help raise some funds for the COVID nineteen effort in India. So. Anand was actually playing a simultaneous exhibition. He was playing several different games at the same time. This was one of them. And so uh, without further ado, let's dive right into this game. All right. So Anand with the white pieces, he opens up with e4. Yuzi continues with c5, just getting the Sicilian defense on the board here. Uh, and Anand continues with c3, the Alapin variation, which is a known way to counter the Sicilian. It's a good way to counter the Sicilian. And also, in particular, it gives you a really nice control of this d4 square, which in this particular game will actually uh, be important. So, Yuzi continues with e5. So, this is not necessarily a terrible move, but what it does do is it, deny, it de denies Yuzi the opportunity to play e6 later on in the game if he needs to. Because very often in the Sicilian, you'll see... Uh, e6 played as a response to bishop to c4 because early on sometimes this bishop c4 is pretty has some nasty threats here so you like to see e6 in the sicilian very often just to keep that at bay so he can't play that anymore just something to keep in mind uh, Anand continues knight to f3 it's getting his knight into the game knight c6 standard development then you have bishop c4 knight f6 and now Anand comes in with d3 so he not only defends this pawn which the knight on c knight can't really come to c3 to do uh, and he also opens up the line for this nice bishop here, this dark squared bishop to come out and uh, uh, deliver some attacks on this black, this long diagonal. Bishop e7 comes in, perhaps in bearing in mind that Anand has this bishop to g5 move, which would pin the knight. So this bishop e7 is just preemptively saying that it's not going to work because then you can just move this knight any. Because if bishop g5, well, you can just move the knight away and there's no pin, right? Well, Anand plays bishop g5 anyways, yeah, and. Yuzi continues with a6. This idea being, of course, you can come in with b5 and start to push this bishop back. And if the bishop goes to b3 of c4, so you can start to break open the center a little bit there. So that's the idea. Anand takes here this bishop, this knight on f6. He just trades that down. You have bishop. You have bishop. Take, you have bishop takes um, knight. Bishop takes bishop takes bishop, and and now Anand plays a4. So. Now he's just sort of saying, if you play b5, I can just take it away. I can just take it, and it also gives you this option to bring your bishop back to a2 if needed. But one thing that this trade also does is it no means that Yuzi can no longer play d5 if he needed to. Because when the knight's still there, you could potentially play d5 and deflect this bishop off this diagonal if you needed to, just at least or at least keep it off immediately. Um, but now this this move d5 is only defended by the queen, so you can't really. Um, it's no longer viable because you have two attackers. Oops. So in this position, um, Yuzi goes and plays and plays d6, right? Just again, just uh, getting this bishop the chance to come into the game, and just uh, solidifying this pawn structure here. Um, Anand goes in with uh, with knight a3. He comes in knight a3, just saying, all right, let's get this knight into the action. Uh, it's currently pretty passive over there. Yuzi goes ahead and castles, just gets his king to safety, and knight to c2. So just getting this knight into a slightly better position than it was on a3, because now it defends the d4 square. It can also come up to e3 here and uh, sort of start to, uh, you know, get some play in the center. You have bishop g4 by Ch by Yuzi. Again, the, now the bishop g4 move is not a terrible move at all by any means, but what this, what, the only trouble here is there's just not a lot of things you can do to follow it up. Because when you play a move like bishop g4, you generally like to have some sort of a follow-up threat. So for example, something like knight to e5, or if you have the, the option, something like e4. These are good moves because they also pile up on this pin knight here and give you some really fun options there. You don't have, usually doesn't really have anything like that here, right? Because knight to d4 is met by this c3 pawn. Again, really nice c3 pawn there. That's, it really keeps this knight at bay for the entire game here. Um, and there's just no other really, there's no other threats you can bring in immediately. So it didn't seem super necessary to me, but uh, nonetheless, it's not a terrible move. Then you have knight e3. 
again just doing as we just talked about getting this knight into the center you have this we have a lot this knight has a lot more range here in the center provides some defense with the c4 bishop also you know gets you gives you some play with these squares and also develops with tempo by attacking this bishop here so using actually here he makes a little bit of a mistake that sort of tanks the game for him and he plays bishop to g5 so this is a blunder because as you can see here this knight on this bishop on g4 is just hanging right so he just loses the bishop for free and so now he has no compensation for that so now he has to find a way to fight this back he goes with king to h8 so the idea here is this pawn initially while well, the king was on g8 this pawn was pinned to the king by this nice light square bishop here but now by moving his king to h8 he's sort of giving himself the option to come in potentially with f5 later on get his rook into the game and uh, you know just sort of try to push into the center from this side of things Anand comes in with h4 driving this bishop back so the bishop goes back to h6 and Anand is happy to trade down here so he just takes this we have a trade here and again Anand's a piece up so he's happy to take the trades as they come so and now you have g4 again really just pushing at the black king here because you, you can already see the black king the king says a little fragmented so Anand's just really trying to push hard at it here with g4 you have f6 preventing this g5 thrust here and now you have queen d2, so just keep putting another attacker on this, putting an attacker on this h6 square, which is a re which is really a, a big vulnerability for black there. He has no good way to defend this, so usually he comes in with king to h8. It's probably the best way to go ahead and defend that. Um, there's not a lot of other great options. Uh, so now you have bishop e6. So getting your bishop into this nice square here, preparing for bishop f5, which is a really strong outpost because it's supported by these two pawns, and you know black doesn't have a lot of good ways to kick back that bishop. So queen e7, again trying to get that bishop out of there, you have bishop bishop f5, just like we talked about, a very strong outpost for that bishop there. And now uh, usually comes in with rook g8, just hoping to sort of get some play with this rook, get it to on this nice open file here, the semi-open file here, just to get some counterplay. Uh, Anand now comes in with g5, and usually plays h5. So Again, the idea here is he just doesn't want to give Anand the option to go after that h7 pawn if he captures. Because if you if you take here, you take here, and you take here, then this falls, and you have not only is this rook very well positioned, the bishop defends it, you now have a skewer and you lose your queen. So you can't do that. So usually just says, you know, let's keep this closed. And he's inviting him to come and capture here on f6, because then that gives him a nice open file here with his rook. So any Anand accepts, goes here, grabs this, queen takes here, and now you have queen g5 check. So now you're forcing a trade of queens here. Uh, so Yuzi has to accept this. You have a trade here. And this is good for Anand again, because again, he's just compounding on that advantage that he gained from that free bishop there. So he's now just really sort of just pushing that material gain by just trading off pieces. And now you have h6. Um, just nice, just sort of, you know, trying to push this pawn off, try to get his rook in, get, get his rook this nice open file. Um, Anand comes in with rook takes on h5. And it's that's a good move because if you take this right away and you, you take with the king, this pawn is for now at least somewhat secure. But now with by taking on h by taking on h5, this pawn is now under a lot of pressure, and you also have this other option coming, of course, of rook to h7 check, because it's defended by the bishop here. That gives you some really uh, nice options. You can go after that b7 pawn there. And a rook on the seventh rank is just always very, very powerful. So Yuzi goes ahead and takes this. And now Anand actually doesn't go for that. He goes for king to h2. Okay, king to e2, excuse me. So now he's saying I can now bring this rook into the game as well, right? And that gives him an even stronger attack because this g5 pawn is very difficult to defend at this point. The king can't really come in. King could probably come to f6, but that's probably the extent of it. But you already have two different attackers on this pawn already. So rook to g1 now is a very strong move that's coming up. So using here goes with g4. So now at least you kind of, you know, you're moving it with a little bit of tempo. So he has to capture this right away. Uh, and you have a little bit of time to sort of get get something, get your king to a slightly better spot here. So king f6, now just doing just that, just getting his king to a slightly better square here. Um, also opening this rook here to eye down on this bishop here on, on g4. So Anand remedies that, bishop to f5. Again, putting this bishop on a very strong square that's defended here, and also is going to block the king in. So, and usually here plays rook to g7, trying to maybe double up the rooks, um, look for some sort of a counterplay there, and also blocking this rook to h7 here, which is which would otherwise go for that g this b7 pawn. But Anand comes in with rook to h6 check now, 
right? And Yuzi goes with king to f7, and now Anand grabs this d6 pawn, and it's in this position that Yuzi resigned the game. So, because there's not a lot of great play you have here, because once again, this knight here is actually, even though it's you know, he technically has that piece, it just doesn't do much, right? Because you can't really move it to any of these really nice squares here because of the c3 pawn. And so you only you just have to move it back, and you know, it's just it's just not a not a great knight. On the other hand, Anand has this really powerful rook here. So bishop is in a really strong square. It's going to be very difficult for uh, Yuzi to dislodge that. This knight can always come into the game with you know, and then maybe knight to e5 coming in the future. Um, and of course, this rook rook to g1 is also a really a dangerous threat. But he also has potential of rook to d7 check if he wants trade off this rook and also put an attack on that b7 pawn. So. A lot of different options coming in for Vishy Anand and just there's just not a lot you can do here. So pretty nice game I thought. Uh, real, real props to Yuzi Chao because he, he, he actually used to represent India in chess in uh, many years ago. He played under 12 for India but since then he hasn't played a lot of chess so this is it's very impressive of him to hold up against a former world champion like this and someone especially someone as good as Vishy Anand to hold up against him for this long and not make that many blunders is, is quite impressive. So we played a really good game here. Besides that bishop to, bishop to uh, you know that bishop g5 move there that when he lost the he gave up the free bishop. Everything else he did pretty well. You know against Anand, there's just not much you can do, um, especially in that position. He held his own. He held his own pretty well. So a really fun game here. And um, yeah, I hope you like this analysis. Um, don't worry, I will have more AP calc, uh, more calc content coming in the near future. Just have to write up some lesson plans. I haven't had time to do that lately, but. Um, We'll have more of that coming very, very soon. Uh, if you like this analysis, do let me know. I would love to love to make more if that's something you guys like. And uh, yeah, it was just good feedback for me because I haven't made a chess video in like seven years. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, hope this was helpful and I'll see you again later. Take care.